Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. woo If you've ever wanted steering and guidance from the universe, then do we have the three S's show for you. Ooh. Today we'll talk about signs, symbols, and synchronicities, and even closing doors and what they mean for you. That plus we'll talk about being seven minutes too late, twice, oh. faith and grace, <laughs> golf carts and generators, owning power and fun, embodiment and discernment, Goldilocks dreams, following a feeling, and what in the world deja vu birds and RVs have to do with anything. <laughs> So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. <laughs> okay, RVs and birds. Please to do go tell. There first, I cannot. What happened? So last last week's show, to continue the saga. Yeah. I ran out the door. Yeah, to look for I smart bees. Because I had a feeling that I needed to get to the dealership for the RV. Your face has gone blank. Uh, it's no longer blank, but is it blank? No, I see you waving now. <laughs> I had to race out the door for the RV. And uh, I, I, because I, I had decided between the two models, I knew what I was getting, knew exactly what I was getting, had been in discussions with the salesperson, got the price, got the everything, got to get there and got there, sat down with Jessica. We had dotted our I's and crossed our T's and our finances before we left, raced out the door gently and slowly. I talked about moving <laughs> slowly and quickly at the same time, got there, said a prayer to the angels, picked up the cell phone to go uh, meet with the saleswoman and the phone goes bzz, bzz, bzz. and I open the phone and there's a text from the salesperson and it was seven minutes earlier and she goes, I'm sorry, it just sold. Oh, no, no. Signs, symbols and synchronicities. Jessica's looking at me. She's having flashbacks from like 10 years beforehand and going, is this dude going to melt down or something? Is he going to like fall apart on me? And, and she goes, are, are you planning on melting down? I'm like, no, no, life is good. This really hurts. Wait, where, how far did you have to drive to get there? Uh, an hour and a half. Oh, my gosh. Not, not that bad. It's, it's a Tesla. It's kind of fun-ish. Uh. LA traffic, not so fun-ish. But, but we get there. And so I know everything in life happens for a reason. I mean, I'm convinced of this. You cannot tell me otherwise. And I know there's, there's grief and there's tragedy and there's stuff that we don't want to happen. And, and in this world, we go, why did this happen? I'm not making light of that at all. But I'm going, there is a reason for this. And I said, all right, day not ruined. Let's go look at, look at the RV that we weren't able to get. And then let's look at the RV that we could still get. And let's see what comes of this. And so we go to uh, look at these RVs. First off, the couple that's buying the RV that we were going to buy is still there. So we can't look at the one we were interested in. So we go to look at this other one and the saleswoman's golf cart dies. Oh. It runs out of power and it won't start. And oh. so we had to walk, not a big deal to go see this, but I'm taking note as we're going right. along. Seven minutes too late. Why couldn't it have been, this was Monday through Friday, why couldn't it have sold at any other point than right now? Mm -hmm. And now we're visiting with the dealership. Why did this golf art die right now? Mm -hmm. We get to another dealership. We, we, we end up getting an order form from her and we fill out what we want if we want to order it, but it's going to be midsummer at earliest before it comes in. And we'd rather not be in the 110 to 120 degree desert uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. We're not used to that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're open. We go to another dealership and we look at uh, a beautiful competitor's RV. And the main area is, is beautiful. It has a kitchen, it has a living room, plenty of space, not the table and desk setup that I wanted, but we might be able to make it work. It has a, an, a kitchen that's raised up above the living room. So it's kind of nice. You're up high in the kitchen. But, the area that's gonna be the studio, the tail and the last few feet of it dip down like a ramp. So you can't actually put furniture there. Oh. And the bedroom fits a king size bed, which is nice, but the door is so tight that when you close the door, the door rubs up against the mattress. 
Oh. So you feel like you're in a sardine in right. a king size bed. Right. Didn't feel right. And so we went home. We filled out the form to order the RV, or, or we had most of it filled out with her. We, we did a little homework, and I'm texting back and forth with the salesperson to order the RV. And we've got it nailed down. Price seems good. Everything seems right. All right, we're in good shape. I go out for a um, a bike ride, which is a whole nother story because all, all of our trail access here at the house just disappeared because somebody bought the land that the trailhead and fire road is on and closed it all off. Oh, no. So it's an interesting bike ride. The signs and symbols. Oh. Time to leave, Michael. I get home and there's a text that arrived 52 minutes earlier. That says, if I don't hear from you in 45 minutes, I'm on vacation all week and you won't be able to order the RV. Oh. Which meant that I missed by seven minutes. Oh, no. Again. Oh, no. So shall I continue the story? Or we dive into your stuff and we entice people to hang in there till the end to go through this whole story. Because it has been fascinating to watch this play out and Jessica and I and yourself, we're playing at a fun level of the game. I'm not going to say right. higher or lower or anything. We're playing at a fun level where we can see things right. for more than they are at. It still is uncomfortable, right? but we can see them. Mm. So are there any other dealerships available that you could check? Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> Every dealership that has what we are looking for is out what we're looking for is we're looking for a nice rv with the dinette with the back room that we can have our office but with double pane glass so that you have soundproofing more soundproofing from the outside world and obviously much better in winter and we're going to be using it in colder climates we want the double pane glass and could not find the double pane glass anywhere mm. And, you know, we're in Southern California, so I figured look north, look everywhere, could not find it. And so I'm going, what do I do? And so I went to sleep, I don't know, it was Monday night, Tuesday night, what do I do? And so I go to bed and I um, do a meditation in bed where I visualize myself in the vehicle, I'm living in the vehicle, I'm having fun in the vehicle. And the most important thing is how quiet and peaceful it is in here. Mm -hmm how peaceful it is with the double pane glass. And I'm living the experience of being in this RV with a double pane glass. And before I drift off to sleep, I said, angels, please give me a sign of what I'm supposed to do. I go to sleep, I wake up the next morning. I'd had the weirdest dream where there was somebody who had like dreadlocks, except they were golden. Hmm. And I don't know if I cut them off or if they were cut off, of his head and then they were sewn onto me these <laughs> long golden kind of locks with knots on the end of them and i'm twirling them around and having so much fun <laughs> waving my can you see where i'm going golden locks and i wrote down my dream in automatic writing and it's like no duh goldie locks you don't get the one that's too hot you don't get the one that's too cold you find the one with the double pane glass that you want. Mm -hmm. And so I go, I guess I'm supposed to order it. I'm following the signs and symbols of the universe. I guess I'm supposed to order the RV. And if I have to wait until the middle of the summer at earliest, I'll wait until the middle of the summer. Summer universe is guiding. I'm letting go of attachment. But she's not in town. So I have to order from a different dealership. And I go, actually, there, there was a possibility I could have ordered from that dealership, but it felt weird twice in a row being cut off at seven minutes. I didn't try to find another salesperson there. I had initially met somebody else a week earlier who I could have gone to, but it didn't feel right. I had all these other dealers who were saying, well, we can help you, we can help you, we can help you, we can get it ordered, we can try to get it in a little bit earlier, we can do this, we can do that, we can do the other thing, um, just blah, 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 generator. But, what? 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 Generator? Generator. What does that mean? Well, what said saleswoman had neglected to tell me 
was that the company and thereby the country had just run out of generators for the RVs. An RV depends on a generator to have this thing called electricity, okay. also known as power. <laughs> With a generator, your RV is what we call dead. Right. Now you can get huge solar banks and we're doing that so that you can run for a lot of the time on solar but unless you're in a sunny climb in the desert the whole time and uh, you can't run on just solar and the solar's not powerful enough for your right. air conditioning right so the form she had me fill out to order somebody had basically in the factory cut the form took out the column about generator and glued it back together and so there was no option for generators. So the right RV at the right price that I was about to order was going to come without electricity. And she hadn't told me this. Oh, my goodness. And the other dealerships are like, you do know that there are no RV and no generators left in the country. In other words, you can order all the RV you want, but it is not going to be functional. Right. Oh, my goodness. Out wow. of power. And now we play an energy game i talk about myself as an alchemist playing with energy so if you look at the messengers and how they come a messenger of being without power that's a very very powerful message mm -hmm. um, i took that very seriously and i'm going all right angels guides what am I supposed to do? Get a used one. <laughs> All right. Let's look at the used ones. You've exhausted anything else. And for a day or two, Jessica had been hopping up and down used. And I'm like, let me look first to see if I can get what I really want. And if not, we go the used route. Because what I had negotiated was actually a better deal on the new than I would have gotten used. But with no power. <laughs> There, there is that, CJ. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's go the used route. So what do I do? I send out emails to everybody I can find across the country that has one of these going, do you have dual pane glass? Do you have dual pane glass? Do you have dual pane glass? And then I step back and said, this is played on an energetic game. Let's go into the space capsule. So we have our side bedroom here where Ruru sleeps, so the Ruru bedroom. And I go and I lay down in bed there and I have my order list. The only thing we hadn't decided on the order list was the, the premium stereo. I'm going, is it really worth a few thousand dollars for a premium stereo or can we get like a $50 uh, uh, box and plug it into an iPhone? It comes with the stereo, who knows? So I hadn't figured that out, but I lay down and I see the RV being towed up the driveway because it's, it's, it, it, it's attached to a truck. I see it coming up the driveway. I see it parking. I see myself um, getting so excited and going, we did it, we did it, we did it. I see the stairs coming out, me going up, feel myself going up the stairs, feel my hand on the, the door latch, opening the door, going inside of it, pulling out the slide up. It's 500 square feet. It's bigger than a tiny home or two put together. And, and I'm inside of it and I run my hand along the kitchen counter and I feel the mattress and I run my hands along the couch and all sorts of other things. And we're doing it and I'm looking out the windows and I'm going, we did it, Pookie, we did it. I'm so excited and I have a discussion with Jessica about this and we check out the nook where she wants to sleep in this thing and hang out with the kitties. And I get so tremendously excited and I put myself in that place. And then later in the evening, I went to bed. And the next morning, oh, and then before I went to bed, Jessica and I, we lay down together and um, we went into the RV together. And I walked us through a guided meditation of us going in the RV and celebrating and playing in the RV, everything. I don't know if I cooked in the RV, but I actually took a mop um, and, and got the double sink and was cleaning the floors. And I was so proud of this thing and <laughs> lived in the RV, went to sleep in our king size bed in our king size bedroom, not a small bedroom, king size bedroom got up in the morning and literally got up in the morning after we did our, our, our um, visualization. Uh, oh, and asked for uh, guidance that night too. And in the morning had another kind of Goldilocks kind of dream. Get what you want to get. Uh, also, it said that you're very tired. Rest more. <laughs> got up and envisioned I was getting out of the king size bed. I was so excited and I put my feet on the floor and I'm in the RV bedroom and I go out of the bedroom to go do my automatic writing and I do my automatic writing and I spend 30 minutes writing out the story 
of me in the RV, of me so excited of what we get to do and living the experience in the RV. And then after I'm done with my automatic writing, I flip open my email. And one person had wrote, written back, I've got the dual pane glass. Yes. <laughs> and I wrote him back quickly, didn't hear from him, wrote him back again, didn't hear from him. Don't want to be too anxious, but maybe it's gone to spam. And, and, and the mind is going wild. You know, did I miss? This was a few days ago when he had posted this, you know, did somebody out? And I'm pulling myself back to center because I know errant thoughts do not help. And there's a different right. frequency to them. And I don't want to bring that frequency about <laughs> I'm like, this is all good. This is all perfect. He does get back in touch with me. We do speak. And he got it with every single thing we wanted, except he regretted that he didn't get the premium stereo. <laughs> I hadn't been clear in my visualization on the premium stereo. I hadn't decided. It was wild i had looked at putting in uh laundry machines in this thing but you had to do you had to uh do ventilation work and all this stuff he had done that nice. every single thing but here's the kicker i call him up and i've got a list of questions question number one so we're gonna go to question number one and question number two question number one does she have a name yeah because this will tell me everything I need to know about whether I'm buying this vehicle or not. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, and he had a truck for sale with the, with the RV, of which we might get the truck, but I don't think so. We do get to get a truck as well. He said, they're faith and grace. Oh. Truck and grace is the RV. <laughs> I've been looking for peace in the RV, and that is grace we had talked about do we call it a peace train do we call it a magic carpet i'm like i just envisioned myself in this thing of perfect peace mm -hmm. and jessica goes yes grace and peace wow so that's question number one <laughs> question number two he goes um i hear you have a a fur child behind you a what i'm like yes yes a fur child or something like that and i go yes we have kitties and I said, which brings us to question number two. I said, do you have any pets on board? And he goes, funny you should ask, because right now we don't have the kitchen table in. It has the kitchen table and dinette, but we have our home for our bird. Oh no, you are not kidding. <laughs> what kind of bird? Don't tell me it's a chicken. No. It's in the it's in the parrot family, but he had a bird on his RV. Oh my Nobody God. else has birds in their RV, and I'm like, well, take it. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you have to go? Where is it? Where is it located? Where's Kansas. Grace located? Awesome, Kansas, Kansas. I'm gonna go back to Kansas. This is so perfect. The truck we're looking at, if we get this truck and don't have it pulled out here is is actually in like indiana and so you go to Indi if i do if i do the driving rather than pay somebody to ship everything out here i fly to indiana pick up the truck drive out to grace and pick up grace and bring her back here wow. so it, it is perfect beyond perfect we saved might as well we saved a whole armada of money and it's still a 2021 20, which means still 2021 Yes. So when we go why is to he reset, selling it then? He's re he's selling it because if Mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Mm -hmm. And they just had their eighth grandchild, and they want to get something smaller to travel with the little one in. Oh. So, uh, so it's their they've gone through two wow. RVs in, in the last two years figuring out what what uh, Mama wants. So. Um, wow. So we save this whole armada of money, which is awesome. And I, I love a good deal. I, I, I'm an alchemist. I, I, I love law of attraction, but I love a good deal. I know right. you love a good deal too. And, and it's still a 2021. We probably won't keep it for that long because there'll be something else that we want to move into at some point and we'll be able to recoup everything that we had in it. It is in every way the definition of everything that I talk about for my highest good and the highest good of all or something better. 
And what it required was faith, was grace, was following the signs and symbols, was letting go, not trying to fight this thing and not going, well, the answer is I've got to slay the dragons. No, I got to go into my space capsule and play in there. I got to go into my automatic writing and play in there and let the universe figure out the details. Mm, that is the best story and I'm, I'm going, universe, ever. You, better, you better come through here because I need a good story to tell because we've been teaching this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best story ever. I love it. Um, I, I'm so happy for you. And you would think, that I knew all this before talking to you because, but I didn't because I was like, well, did you try another dealer? And you're like, funny, you should see it. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm like, did you try use? It's almost as if you cued me up to say these things, but I knew none of those things and they cued up perfectly for the story. So there you go. <laughs> Synchronicity yet again <laughs> coming into play. <laughs> Uh, people probably think we rehearse the show. We do not rehearse. Nothing is rehearsed. I never know what you're going to say. Nor, and I'm just like, I hear words in my head like, find another dealer, get a used one. I just hear it in my head and it just comes out of my mouth and it seems like we rehearse it. We, I did not. We did not. Okay, that is amazing. Um, and I think we're playing in the same play space because I think we've been talking through several episodes about synchronicity and how does one flow in with the current that is trying to take you someplace if you will allow it. And um, uh, Friday after I talked to you last week, I spoke to um, a client who is a developer and we were talking about like business plans and like I was helping him with this business plan and he was talking about like a strategy to pursue his next career and and I said um, and we had talked about him doing um, an agile like an agile is a framework of development where you do something you take a step small step you try something, you fail fast, you move to the next version, and you do these really quick iterations, which is a very different way than how things used to be done in the past in most traditional businesses where you have like a, a gigantic business plan, you align everyone towards this gigantic business plan, and and you methodically hit the steps hoping that it, it will eventually lead you to a specific destination, of which it may or may not which is very similar to our whole conversation, right? You like fill out the, you did all your due diligence. You figured out what you wanted to do. You filled out the paperwork. You, but like what you did also is you had a clear vision on what you wanted. And then you continually like executed down the plan and, you know, until you got to, but then there was these like little interruptions. Oh, woman leaving golf cart stalling you know like all these different no signals generators. no generator by the way no and yeah exactly hard to have an inspire nation show without power in your car um <laughs> so many different metaphors that i can't even begin and the fact that you're like you're back to kansas and the whole wizard of oz like there's just so many <laughs> wonderful <laughs> stories upon stories i can add to the one that you you were just telling me but so, you know, there's this kind of, you know, you're getting these messages and, and you're, you still have a vision, but you're kind of adjusting, you know, I was going to take I-5, now I'm going to take I-99 and go some side roads, you know, but you had this vision of what you're after. And um, so I thought about this, this idea of like, okay, I, I'm, I'm born of the old traditional model of coming up with a plan and coming up with a beautiful dream. And I still believe that that is how you manifest things is thinking about the biggest, most beautiful, wonderful, aspirational dream that you have, and then moving towards that space, you know, little by little. And I would say my last five years have been like, I don't even know what this aspirational dream is, but I am just going to do things and learn, well, my aspirational dream is n not this, it's not this. It is this, and it's that, but it's not this, you know, so it's not necessarily coming up with the big dream. And 
I thought, well, that's the only thing if I were to go back and have the conversation that I had with this um, uh, client would be to say, like, don't forget the big aspirational dream where you feel amazing. And what you did is like um, did the whole thing that every single guest that we've ever had says to do. Feel like you're there. You're there already. You're in the dream. You're feeling in the dream. You're living in the dream. And then that's going to give you, it's basically training your neurocircuitry where you want to go and your energy is vibrating at this, you know, frequency of getting to this dream. So I love how you did that. I So I've had this, so a lot, I think I told you about six months ago, I spent I had like 86 pages of awe-inspired writing that I distilled down to 12 pages in a business plan and thought, I don't really know, even know how to think about this business plan, but it's this aspiring beacon of light for me. And I thought, well, what I haven't done is the thing that you mentioned, which is to like envision myself doing it, you know, moving forward. And so I'm in COVID where it's hard to know, like, how do you navigate towards these things if... You know, there's not a lot of opportunities coming your way, but I have this like shimmering castle and dream of, of a beauty, beautiful world that I would like to create. And so I thought, well, the old me would have been like draw a straight line and try to get there. And, and you know, after talking, and, I, and I've been just wondering, my question of the day is how to get there. Beautiful dream. I'm here, point A, how to get to this beautiful dream of which is like, I'm, it's not like a vehicle. It's like this beautiful dream of a world that, you know, is full of harmony, where we're unified, where unity is more seen than, than division, you know. So it's not like a physical thing I can touch. It's just kind of a dream that I have. And which way do I go? You know, there are infinite, you know, do I do a podcast about it? Do I do a workshop? Do I work with women? Do I work with diversity, inclusion, and equity? Like, I don't really know. It's just kind of, ah, I've been like, ah, <laughs> over the last week. And so I had, I, Friday starts off with the conversation with this client. Mm -hmm. um, Monday ends up being um, a conversation or, or with a friend who um, says to me, you know what, what I'm realizing, we talk about another shared friend and we're like, what she needs to do is move forward and just take one small step forward and move forward by taking one small step forward. And I was like, yeah, I, I get that. But the problem is, is sometimes when you take one step forward and it seems like a small step, it ends up committing you for three to six months. And then when you do that, you miss your, your outside of the flow of synchronicity. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, so I contemplate it like, so is it better to take a small step and, and, and like, so what that means is I have to take a small step and every mm -hmm. step is guided by synchronicity. Like what is the bigger picture telling me? So I get a conversation on Friday, I have a conversation on Saturday with my husband, I have a conversation on Monday about this topic. And then I have another conversation <laughs> with, and, and, and actually there's like three or four other conversations with this same message over and over and over again. At this point on Thursday, I've heard this same message probably like six or seven times. So um, I get, uh, I'm interviewing some woman on the I Ching and how to do a toying toss. So I do a toying coin toss and then I'm like, well, help us interpret how you would read this. You know, use my yeah. reading and help, help us understand how to do a reading. And um, she says a couple of different things. She says, one is she's like, you're always in the background. Like you're always like the person interviewing someone but you're never like in the foreground sharing and talking about who you are, what you want, you know, and sharing from your own place of being a teacher and a wisdom person. And I was like, yeah, that's true. And, um, and Until now. well, I don't know. That's the question. So I've been thinking about your transmission and channeling. And so at one point outside of this, conversation I want to talk to you about what it entails and how you got to the how you overcame it's extremely hard to be in front of a camera and talk to 
a supposed audience that may or may not be there, you know, so I, I don't, I kind of need some guidance on that, but that's my one question that's out there. <laughs> I and, have thoughts. Okay. So then that's you owning the power. And she said, but the thing is, it's like you, you, you have this big vision, but you're not alone in doing this. And nor do you have to like sacrifice everything to get to this vision. Cause when I go in, I'm like all in, you know? And so the question is like, maybe not all in, you know, like be committed and focus and go for depth, but don't lose sight of everything else in your life to actually receive this vision. Cause in fact, if you do this, you're not in unity with yourself. You've lot, you've created division within yourself. And, um, so I'm like, wow, okay, this is really interesting. And how really this idea of this, as this, I've been traveling this like one week's worth of six to seven conversations about the same topic. I recognize that, you know, we have this desire. I mean, you and I have this desire of creating a, a beautiful world, you know, and, and there's, the desire to want to do it, do it on my timing, do it the way that I think it should be a certain way. This is on my side, at least. I wanted to look a certain way. I'd like to do these things. I, 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 I have these skills. I want to bring it when I want to do it now. And I thought, well, that's super interesting. It's very eye focused, <laughs> you know, and not a we, the collective, a we, the synchronicity focus. And like you did in your in your RV story, you didn't go and Jessica was like, isn't Michael going to like freak out? And you went to, uh, no, we are not going to freak out because I know that I have traveling along with me a we, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just me. Mm -hmm. It's a we. And even though I'm not getting this or this or this and everything is sold out, I'm going to keep on moving forward towards a goal and keep on pivoting and taking different roads, but I'm just going to get there. And so, um, yeah, even this conversation is not surprising about the same thing of like how to read the signs, read the symbols and be in synchronicity and achieve this beautiful power filled, not empty without generator goal. <laughs> so anyways, that was, that was, um, that was the discernment, like being able to discern when you're in flow and when you're not in flow. And you have to go very, as you said, slowly, but you also have to act. We had an interesting incident. I love the synchronicities here. We had an interesting incident on YouTube on Sunday night, because I do YouTube live on Sunday night, where everything appeared on the surface to be out of flow, and yet everything was completely in flow. Hmm. Every Sunday night, we do a YouTube live event where I speak for about an hour before a large audience, and then people ask questions. And we've been tinkering and playing, and, and this will get to, we'll have an off-air discussion perhaps on, on this. We've been tinkering and playing on, on different vehicles, different way we can get our messages out, mm -hmm. and how we can couple our messages. Mm -hmm. And to couple a message means, for one thing, I could do this recorded right here with you, and now I'm learning ways that I can also pipe it out live at the same time if I want. Mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So Sunday night, we're going to do the YouTube live. And I said, you know, we experimented with this a little bit last week. I said, we have a better idea how to do it now. I said, you know, it might not be tonight, but maybe you want to grab a, a phone and we'll set up the phone either for tonight or another night. And we'll pipe it out as a Facebook live and on top of it being a YouTube live. And Jessica comes running out of her office and grabs the computer 10 minutes before I'm going to go live. 10 minutes before anything is maybe not the ideal time to try things. And she sets up this thing called StreamYard mm. um, so that I can go live on multiple channels at the same time. Oh, cool. And it was all so cool and so perfect, except that I go to start and I go, um, Facebook is getting a video feed. YouTube isn't. Mm. And 20 minutes later of us, we'll be with you guys in five minutes. We'll be with you guys in five minutes. We'll be with you guys in five minutes. So I'm not able to start it, although the Facebookers are watching me. I'm <laughs> live on Facebook trying to diagnose this, which it. is kind of cool because I handled it 
very, very zen. Right. I've got a live audience with all these technical challenges. I get the thing live, ka-chunk, except that the sound isn't working properly. The oh, sound no. is coming through a headset. It's not coming through the main mic. People are saying, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Well, I'll just unplug this and that should. And now there's death, dead, <laughs> dead zone, no sound. And I eventually had to restart the whole thing. And, and I got done with that YouTube live. And it was one of my all time favorite uh-huh. YouTube live events ever because I held the energy. Mm. I held, I'm ready to cry. I held the space mm. so that it didn't matter. And people felt that. And that's a different level that you and I are playing at now. Mm-hmm. People could feel the energy. It wasn't about the words. It wasn't about how it came out. We learned a lot. So now we know how to do it. We did an event that we weren't planning on doing live, but Thursday I did a recording and we ended up going live for the heck of it. And it worked great. Mm. But being able to flow through what appears to be no synchronicity or the doors closing. And I mentioned that at the beginning, watch for the doors that close. To me, the doors that close are more important than the doors that open. Hmm. The doors that close are just rocks jutting out in a uh, river, guiding the water. The water is not going, oh my God, there's a door closed in front of me. There's a rock. What am I going to do? It simply follows that flow. Hmm. And that Flow uh, that Sunday night was magnificent. And the flow of door closing after door closing. I could have bought an RV that day that didn't have the double, the patio deck that I wanted. And and that my dear friend who bought one, Brant Pinvedek, two weeks ago, he said, get it without the patio deck. You don't need the patio deck. And But my vision was like, no, we're going to be living on that deck. Mm-hmm. I know it. I can see it. I can mm-hmm. feel it. That's like home. And it has a sliding glass door where we can put up bird feeders oh nice us yeah i'm like we need that so instead i watch where the doors closed and i didn't try to fight anything and say well i'll just get something else Mm. i just went and followed the flow Mm. i love it and so it was better that youtube event was better with its challenges for teaching me for teaching others who are watching on facebook who knows what they were seeing (laughs) I'm like laughing through it. Things are going poof, poof, blowing up left and right. And I'm like, well, there's another way you don't do a YouTube live. <laughs> well, you have to try it because otherwise you'd never know. You have to try it. And, and that's agile. You yeah. try it. You fail fast. You say, well, that's another way not to make a light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> and you keep going. Yeah. I love it. You know, um, yeah, I, um, I love that for so many different reasons. Um, yeah, I, I, what I think what is great is to see, like, people want to know, you know, we had, I went to a, a, a Wisdom 2.0 event, and it was protested by a group of people, protesting um, the, the fact that Google was taking over so, such a large, and high-tech companies generally are taking over such a large percentage of housing in the Bay Area and people were losing their place of residence because of the pressure in the residential market um, in the market housing market generally and the supposed experts there and in, in all these high-tech companies were like in shock they didn't know what to do and so what they did is they kicked off the protesters and like had cops and protest and I was like wow this is so interesting because in the heat of the moment, if you are in integrity with what you represent, which is to be present with the moment and lean into the moment, I would have probably said, well, I want to hear your concerns. Come on in. Come on in. You're on the stage. You got the stage. You got everyone here. What is it that you would like us to hear? And I know we had a presentation, but this is really what the presentation is about. You triggered another synchronicity. Yeah. I am watching this week as a new fence goes up, a new gate goes up, a new something goes up on our, uh, what we assumed was a public public road, public trail, all sorts of trail signs and stuff. Mm. And I've been watching it. And I went out on this bike ride, the, the one I mentioned earlier, and there are all these signs up. And, and I'm going, well, it's supposed to be a public thing. I'll go around the signs. And my mind is going to, well, what if you met up with this person? What if he stopped you? Because I, I had met this person on, on the trail days earlier, the owner, new owner of the land, mm-hmm. and he was driving his road, his 
car down a, a closed road and I'm going, you know, this doesn't go anywhere. And he goes, I know it's my land. He didn't tell me to get off of it at that point, uh, which is interesting. Uh, yeah. So I'm playing out these scenarios in my head and I'm going, bring it back to center. That's a low vibration thought. Bring it back to center. That's a low vibration thought. What do you want? Focus on what you want. You want a great RV. You're not concerned about what's going on with this trail. Bring it back to a high level. Bring it back. Bring it back. I turn around and come home and um, he's putting, he's there putting up more signs. Hmm. And this gentleman says to me, and he goes, Michael, you're not allowed here. This is my land. And he says, promise me you will never come back here or I'm going to call the police right now. How does he know your name? Because you told him your name. Because I had said hi to him before when he was in his car. I was carrying my rooster. And I say hi to everybody. And I love up everybody. Mm. And wow. it's interesting going along what you're saying. Because I did okay, but I could have done much better. Hmm. I said, I'm a very, and he had his daughter with her, the, him there, like 12 or 13, hammering in stakes with her two dogs, uh, two small dogs. And I said, I'm a very loving person. I said, please don't threaten me. I'm leaving. Hmm. And he said, okay. And I said, hi. I said, is this a, a boy dog? Good boy, good boy. And finally the girl who felt like she couldn't say anything goes no it's a, it's a boy it's a girl and I'm like oh good girl good girl and we shared a moment and I left mm. I handled it with peace I handled it with love I don't like coercion I feel there's a very low energy of promising somebody who threatens you to to mm. promise that doesn't feel good and I was very non-confrontational mm. very mm -hmm. what would have been a better a higher level thing to do which I didn't realize till ab afterwards would have been to said, why don't we break bread? Why don't we invite you over, make it COVID safe, and we have dinner with you, and we'll talk about it. Oh, I had said that this this is, I believe, a public easement, and it's a public road, and that this has brought great joy to everybody in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's when he said, the promise me or I'll call the police. Oh, wow. Wow. But to do it again, I would have done just what you said, to invite people in. I wish that I had, it's all, it's all a learning, I wish that I had invited him literally to dinner yeah. and said, let's talk as friends. Right. And that was hard in that moment. Your nervous system kicks into primordial brain. And if you haven't had these discussions, which we're having now, or that I had with my higher self afterwards of how could I have done this better? Because I didn't, there was no drama out of it. I definitely did it without drama. As much as you can when somebody says, I'll call the police. Right. But how can I do even better yeah. to meet him where he's at? Because he is in a state of fear. If people keep using this, then what happens to my land? What will I be able to build? What will I be able to do? Yeah. I think you handled it um, incredibly well. And I think that going back to this whole idea of signs and symbols, right? You're like, this is like a loving world. Time to leave. <laughs> yeah, and then you have a sign, it's like literally a guy's nailing down signs. <laughs> literally has a sign with a symbol. And it's like, don't come here. And you're like, okay, but like I'm, I'm about love and I don't like being threatened, which is kind of your perspective. And then, you know, I think it, you can do a redo. Like you can still knock on his door and say, hey, I feel like we've got. But but I think the fact that you thought about the redo, like you're sitting here, you're dro you know, riding your bike down towards this beautiful destination, the synchronicity and signs are not there. And so do you just stop or do you do a redo and say, hey, if I were to do this all over again, here's what I think I would have said. I'm sorry that I, I, I it took me back. You know, or, you know, you, you can say the words, but it's like, why don't we have dinner? I'm thinking that the best thing for us to do, because I want us to start off on the right foot as neighbors, is blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's what I think is the wonderful thing in life, is that just like you had a redo after the woman left on vacation, because you're seven hours short of whatever, I don't know, seven minutes short, like... There's always this opportunity to, to because do Because I have stopped and spoken with this gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, they, they, they all sew together beautifully. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you can do a redo. Like there's nothing that ever, and I think what happens, I've noticed with myself and generally with clients is that we don't think to redo anything. And so we just sit in, in like, I wish I had, I could have had a minimal, you know, and, and I interviewed a guest once that introduced this thing, this idea of a redo, and I've used it ever since. And it was huge because I, you know, I yelled at my kids. Did I want to yell at my kids? No. But like I hit, like I had a rough day, I yelled at my kids. And I, and I remember saying to my son, you know what? I should not have yelled at you. And I feel really bad about doing that. I heard what you said was plot. And if I were to do it all over again, here's what I would say and how I really feel. So you understand from a calm perspective how to do this, right? And so I'm modeling what good behavior looks like. I'm also like, and, and, he's, and he was so responsive. This whole redo thing is such a beautiful thing, I think. So my own experience. To this is, is what I say if I meet somebody and then later I regret that I hadn't spent more time or spoken with them or something. If the universe puts us on our path together, I will do that. This person doesn't own a house here as far uh, as right. has bought the land. So if our neighbor appears, I won't go on that trail. I've, I've been in touch with the town. I've been in touch with the county. And it's really going to take the local community coming together far beyond the means of, of me who's leaving in a few months. Mm -hmm. It will take the community coming together to hold on to their land. And if they do, awesome. If they don't, which is not likely that they will, because people who live in the desert tend to be, want to be off by themselves in the desert, which means somebody who is more of a young personality. This is kind of the whole uh, Native Americans versus the, the Westerners who came in if they don't step up and meet him at that level, with a kind and loving place, they'll lose it. Mm. But for me, if he reappears, I will do just that. There's only so far I can carry it on my own. So I've been going through the loving channels. That yeah, so if, if it's like universe, if it is that you want me to do this, then bring this gentleman back and I, mm. will, I will like broker a peace negotiation on this disputed land. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's all you can do because it's maybe not the top of your priority. You, given that you're leaving, it's not necessarily in the top of the priority, but you may be the only one that can negotiate and broker a deal with this gentleman. And it may or may not work, but it's, if there is a shot, then you're probably the most likely that is going to be able to do that. So if universe, you want to be be of this is my highest good you know bring it to me i'm open you know i mean that's basically really what you're you've done throughout your whole looking for that car i mean the van was like bring it bring it i i, I know what i want just bring it you know i want peace and love and and no threats you know like and so bring it <laughs> and and then if not it is a gate that has been put up signs that have been put up all sorts of unwelcomingness that has been put up that is telling us that it is almost time for us to leave the desert yeah yeah and just like the fires those signs absolutely i mean you're kind of like nature the synchronicity around you is giving you signals on what your next step is yeah. i love it next step is a trip to kansas or, <laughs> or something better. i know i just love the whole um yeah, Wizard of Oz aspect. It's like, take me home to Kansas. Um, <laughs> well, that's interesting. There's no place like home. Click. There's no place like home. Click. Get my heels together. Yes, exactly. No Just like, home. there's I'm no place like that's basic. That's what I'm saying. I love it. <laughs> now, Jessica has to get some ruby slippers. Or you. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be genderizing. You can get some ruby slippers. Both of you should wear ruby slippers. Click them and say that when you're in the car. <laughs> I'll get my bright yellow slippers, which is a whole nother <laughs> synchronicity. I, I don't know, do we even go there? Um, a beautiful synchronicity with soft star moccasins, and everybody should check out soft star moccasins. I'll leave it that. But I wrote them, they're dear friends, and I wrote them earlier this week, and, and I got the email back, the funny you should ask. You know, which is, Whenever you hear that, you're in flow. Yes, you're like, yes. Funny you should ask. Exactly. Soft star moccasins. So, all right. Any last words that you want to share, CJ? No. So, all right. So, oh, anything I want to share? I think this has just been the story. Just look for the signs. Look for the symbols. Look for the synchronicities. Be open. Don't fight 
the way, but find flow through the way. And ask for help. That's the other thing you did. You asked for help. You asked for help. You retained faith. You, ha- you kept the big dream. I'll just well, add that's those the pieces. question. Do I retain faith? Do you retain faith? Faith and grace. The truck yeah. is faith. ah oh. It's a different <laughs> truck that I was looking for. Yes, you <laughs> were retaining exactly. <laughs> exactly. You kept the faith. You got grace. <laughs> so for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ Show. Think, be well. Have fun. Keep the faith. Keep the grace. All of this good stuff. Ask for help, and above and beyond all else, shine bright. 